Good morning and welcome to Little Rock Original Free Baptist Church in Lucoma, North Carolina. I'm Jerry Godwin and I'll be bringing the uh, worship together to our Sunday school lesson today, which is uh, entitled Jacob and Laban. It's taken from Genesis chapter 29, verses 15 through 28. That's Genesis 29, verses 15 through 28. Next Sunday, which will be August the 6th, um, the title of the lesson is Sustenance, Sustenance S-U-S-T-E-N-A-C-E. -E. <laughs> the lesson is taken from Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 through 11. We're so glad to have you today, and we are overjoyed to be here, and we pray that you are blessed from worshiping together, and we thank you for your support, and reach out to other people. The kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is here. And there are people that are searching for meaning and purpose in life. This is an opportunity to hear the word of God and to share it one with the other. And we know that you all have prayer concerns. And as we pray right now, please lift that, those up to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. And Heavenly Father, we praise your name for this day. God, we pray, praise you for this privilege, this awesome privilege that I have in responsibility to share your, your word with others. God, people are praying right now, lifting up their concerns to you. God, hear their prayers. Intercede, Lord, and make them aware of your presence and your love and your grace and mercy for their needs. God, we have enjoyed and have been blessed this week with your presence and, and your mercy and your grace. And God, this is something that the world cannot supply. But as Christians, Lord, may we reach out to others and take opportunities to tell of the love of Jesus Christ. Father, we ask that as we study this lesson, that your name and your name only will be glorified. In Christ we pray. Amen. Sir Walter Scott said one time, Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. Last Sunday we studied about Jacob and Esau, and Jacob was a deceiver, and he did everything that he could to steal things that rightfully belonged to Esau. He stole Esau's birthright and his blessings from his daddy, um, Isaac. And last Sunday we saw him, his, his mother, Rebecca, uh, of course, Esau was mad with, very angry with Jacob. And Esau had married a couple of Hittite women. And she was want he wanted to kill Jacob. So Rebecca, who favored Jacob, um, Rebecca, who favored the twin son, she favored Jacob. And she suggested that he might leave and go to Haran or 
um, Panning around where her brother brother Laban lived, who was Jacob's uh, uncle. So he journeyed toward that place, and he had the encounter with God in last Sunday's lesson, the stairway to heaven. And he was aware that God was in charge of heaven and earth, and that um, God promised Jacob that he would be blessed and that he would receive the blessings of Abraham and Isaac. And Jacob, this was an aha moment. You know what an aha moment is in life? And, and you, you probably have had several but it's like one day you're you're contemplating something and you're thinking aha that's it that's what i've been looking for and i pray that one day you will say all this turmoil that i have in my soul is is missing something and one day you will say, Aha, it's Jesus Christ that I need. Now, Jacob, although he was a man, he had yet learned to reach out to God. And so many times in our life, we fail, we try to do everything under our own power until we finally realize that I cannot do it on my own. God help me. And we learn to reach out to God. In today's lesson, you may have heard many times, and it's quite amusing, this lesson, to me, and it led me to contemplate, does God ever laugh? And I'm thinking he had to laugh um, when I was born. <laughs> and, and perhaps he laughed when all of this was occurring, or at least shaking his head. But here we have, we had um, Jacob coming and going to the well. And remember a few Sundays ago that um, Isaac's servant went to the well. But one thing that Isaac did and his servant is that they were prayed up. They prayed that God would show him a wife for Isaac. Here, there's no indication that Jacob was prayed up, that he sought God. But through this story, we will see that God is indeed involved in God is a gracious God. And when he went to the well and he saw um, Rachel, he hugged her and kissed her and told her that he was a kinsman of Laban. And so Rachel went back and told her daddy. And he took Jacob in, and Jacob worked for him for a month as a shepherd. And he was a good worker. And then in verse 15 of chapter 29, it begins by saying, then Laban said 
to Jacob because you are my kinsman should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me what your wages be. So here he recognized what a good worker Jacob was and he was negotiating a salary. This was um, highly unusual. And it says, Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Now it says that you can see someone's soul through, through their eyes. And we've all seen people with beautiful eyes that seem to sparkle. And Leah's eyes, it says, some commentators say that her eyes were beautiful but she wasn't as beautiful as Rachel others say that she had weak eyes and we, we have observed people that had weak eyes but Rachel was younger she was beautiful it says in some commentaries that she had good form, that even with all the clothing garb that she wore, you can tell that she was quite formly. And Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter Rachel. Jacob didn't have any money. He didn't have any um, credit or debit cards that would work in that country. So he decided that for her dowry that he would work for seven years. Well, you know, you can get a good slave for working for seven years for payment. So Jacob said, perhaps he's doing it for her dowry, but maybe perhaps he's doing it to impress Rachel how much that he loves her. But anyway, it was, it was quite a commitment. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. Now, Laban knew that there was going to be quite a bit, number of suitors trying to win Rachel's hand. But he had seen the way that Jacob had worked and that he was, had kinship to him. And he said, I'd rather you have her than someone else. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And they seemed to him but a few days because of his love for her. What an amazing love statement that is. And I know some of you are saying, well, I showed my love for my wife because I've worked for her for 40-something years. 
or 20 something years it's not the same and he loved her and it, and it seemed like time passed just like that because I know for sure that every day that he worked he was one day closer to being um, consummating his marriage with beautiful Rachel so as soon as that time came, that seven years ended, Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, that I may go in to her, for my time is completed. He's demanding his bride, from Laban and he says this agreement has reached completion so Laban gathered the gathered some saying the men but it's, this one says all the people at the place and made a feast now we have quite a fe feast or dinners or parties when people get married but I'm sure it's nothing compared to this place and time. And they parted for quite a while. There was much, much food and much, much wine. And as they say in the 21st century, they parted down, whatever that means. And the evening came and it got dark. And Laban took his daughter, Leah, and brought Leah, Leah get now he brought Leah, the older one, not Rachel, and brought her to Jacob, and he went in to her, and it says that Laban gave his maid, Zippah, to his daughter Leah to be her maid. Now, when morning came, it was Leah. And you may wonder why he didn't recognize this the night before. Well, he may have been inebriated under the influence of, of wine and it was very late and she had a veil on and he consummated the marriage and he wakes up the next morning and says, Ruck Row, this is not right. Now, I was saying this morning you remember how beautiful your spouse was, whether the bride or the husband? And I'm not saying this applies to you or me. And how beautiful she was at the wedding and going on the honeymoon. And the next morning you wake up <laughs> and you look at each other and you're thinking, whoa, here now. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. And she went, he went to Laban, he says, What is this you have done to me? Can I not serve you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? You get the irony here that Jacob has spent most of his life up to this point being a deceiver and here is his new father-in-law deceiving him and Laman doesn't really answer and give an excuse for what he did except he says this is not done in our country giving the younger before the firstborn. 
the first one has to be married before the younger one can be married. And yes, he could have told him that seven years ago. But then Laban tells him, complete the wink, the wink of this one, and we'll give you the other also in return for serving me for another seven years. So Jacob celebrated his marriage to Leah, I mean, yeah, to Leah, for one week. And then he was allowed to marry beautiful Rachel. And he didn't have to work another seven years until after he married her. So indeed, he worked for his two wives for 14 years. Now, I have a, something that I want you to think about. When we study these stories, these are human beings. Think about how each person thought. We always think about how Jacob thought. But what about Leah? I wonder what she thought. All of her life, she was never as pretty as her sister. She probably was not as popular. And here her daddy allowed her to be married to a man that did not love her at that time. How must she have felt? I imagine quite worthless. And here is Rachel, beautiful Rachel, that probably has always been beautiful. And people were attracted to her and saying nice things about her. And she probably got breaks that the other one didn't. And what was her thoughts on all this? Well, this marriage did not work too well. Leah and Rachel did not get along for the reasons that I just said. And these women were the mothers of countries that were rivals forever. So, and Jacob and Laban had a falling out, and he left Haran and took Leah and Rachel. But God's hand is in all of this. God has a plan. And he told Abraham and made a covenant with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And it will continue to Rachel's children were Joseph and Benjamin, and our pastor preached several Sundays on Joseph. And it will continue 
to David and Solomon and Jesse, David's daddy, on down the line, the, the, the good and the bad, and he uses it to fulfill that ultimate promise in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus calls those that he can use in the kingdom of God, not the perfect, not the beautiful, necessarily, not the smartest, necessary, not the richest, but those that can be used. Look at the ones that Jesus chose. Three fishermen, four fishermen, a tax collector, a zealot, the one that would betray him. And they were all used for God's glory and for God's purpose. This lesson illustrates that life is not a work of, in a walk in the park. Every person has a, either is a problem or has a problem. And Jacob is an example of that. And life is an echo of what goes around comes around. And things are worth waiting for and working for. It says that Harrison Ford in 1977 starred in Star Wars. And magazines said that he was an overnight success. And Ford said, yes, it was a night that lasted 15 years. For my friends, let's stay the course. Let's work where Jesus is working. And let's go there and join him in his plan. I'm going to close with this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with God the Father and Holy Spirit, one Lord, now and forevermore. May we praise his holy name. Amen.